Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Super pumped to be back. Good to see you my friend. It's been too long. It has indeed. The duo returns. In this video we have for you game one of a best of three between two teams, Gonzo and Yamin and Farad Rommel and Huma Yoon. And the grand final of Badger Jelly's 2v2 tournament. Today they are playing on Awaba, and on our left in the red team we have Grassi Grabber and Geralt of Syria, which is Yaman and Gonzo, <laughs> playing with Corpo Italiano, Deliberazione, and Reserve 43rd Army. And then on the Axis side we have Farid Rommel playing Festung Dunkirchen and Humiyun playing with the 20th Panzer. What do you think of this attack pattern? Again, great to have you back. Yeah, super fun to be back, man. It's good, it's good to be here. Steel Division 2, amazing. And we're getting new content for this game, if you didn't know. So exciting. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, Corpo, amazing infantry. You know, that's why you play the division, basically. Is they're incredible infantry. They're not the most cost-efficient, but they are very, very strong all the way around the board. 43rd Reserve, giving the armored fist to this little duo here. Um, gets a nice mix of, of different Soviet armor. And then you do get some great, high-quality infantry. You just don't get a ton of them. Uh, also note that uh, Grubber is on Grabber's on balanced and Geralt here is on Maverick income. Interesting for a team game. On the other side, Festung, a very defensive division, a uh, lot of spammy infantry, lots of big explosive guns, and lots of off map. And then 20th Panzer, uh, probably the most well balanced division of these four. Uh, basically has everything, always has one of the OG divisions from way back when. And they're playing on Vanguard and Maverick, so uh, the Fox is always known for their very aggressive game style. Yeah, absolutely. And 2v2 is really interesting because it's it can be very similar to 1v1 in that you have like this Vanguard Maverick playstyle, or you'll see teams that really try and focus more on like the balanced playstyle. Um, myself and Protoss played in this tournament and unfortunately got knocked out in what was a very, very difficult second group. Um, so yeah, this is the final to that for those of you who are watching on my channel. And uh, yeah. It's great to be casting it with attack power. So let's have a quick look at what's going down here on the top side. For the red team, we have uh, some a stag count. There's some Maro Commandosi. Further down, we're going to be seeing a lot of units here. It's going to be some flamethrowers leading the charge from a lot of these Commandosi in half tracks. Some RDT. We got Maro Bren, Gwestori Para, Sherman 3. There's going to be a Spitfire recon coming out at the start. Uh, on the other side, ME410, so we're going to have to check that engagement out. Uh, but following up further down, we've got T34 and SU152 moving down there. And on the very bottom side, it's going to be some Strafniki, looks like. Geralt's going to be covering that with an SU85 as well. SU152 on the very bottom side with the Sapari Roxans, uh, Sapari PFSH. On the right side, with Farad, he's actually started with some off map, going to be following it up with a bunch of medium vehicles there and the Marder 3s. We got the Jagd Pioneers moving in flamethrowers charging to the front line in these tractions to try and get some position early on. Uh, in the mid, IG-33 backed up by an 88 at the start and the Boyter Stalin with the Grilla. That's a big commitment to the mid. On the bottom side, it looks like Huma Yoon just creating a skeleton defense there to hold the front line forwards. Yeah, and it's important to note this game is from way uh, a couple months back, so it's it's a few patches back at this point. At least two patches. Definitely not the most recent one. So you may see some prices and stuff that don't match up with the recent gameplay just something to be aware of yeah i think uh it's i think it's actually only one patch back uh, the patch took a one? while to come back come out with uh, men of steel didn't it so well it's two yeah i mean it's technically the dlc and then they released that second patch after the dlc ah, so okay. yeah so we're, it's, two, it's we're like one and a half patches back let's put it that way yeah yeah well, but uh yes go ahead We've got the SG-43 pushing back these Zerzats to open in the open. We've got some initial engagement from the Commandosi RDT engaging the Festungsgrenadier. The Festungsgrenadier, really nice, chunky, disheartened squad. Jagdkampf trying to come through the tree line, get their MG-42s on target. See the off-map coming down? That's actually hitting pretty well right now onto a rather sizable amount of units, uh, but not getting any necessary direct hits. Yeah, and we saw Jagdkampf here with their Panzer Shrek taking out a half track, which is pretty pretty cool always to see. These are really strong units, uh, one of the unique units out of Festung and, and 
like your elite unit that's it's essentially a Brandenburger with a Panzer Shrek instead of a grenade. Yeah. And that range can really, really catch out uh, enemy armor. In the middle here, the IG Gorilla starting to really break down some of the defensive units. The Alpini Espelante uh, going to be killed off by this large HE, ME410, doing a good job of helping scout and the Ersatz Troop and revealing the position of that sniper by just running into fire, good old advance under contact. Yeah, and that Spitfire that was originally in was not, it was the unarmed one. So there's like the armed one that's really, really good, but that one's just like the 35 point Ooh. nothing. Tasty Boyce Stalin kill. landing a shot on that SU-152. Oof, I wish my Boyce Stalins were that accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's always a dice roll with these uh, IS-2s. 35% accuracy on the main gun. It's no veterancy as well. So <laughs> maximum range. Uh, that's gonna they're gonna be a very very lucky shot on the top side there is potential here for a breakthrough uh, Yamin could, could just decide to, to push on through there but two Yacht Commando now pushing up supported in the center and those will provide recon yeah always really important to get those recon and I think newer players often underestimate how important having recon around is you gotta know what your opponent's doing now one thing at the moment I'm a bit wary of is it seems like Gonzo and Yamin are playing actually very conservatively. You're not really seeing them push on the island when they have a big superiority in numbers. When they're obviously under a big threat in the center. The amount of units that are clearly on view here from Farid and Humigun uh, is quite something. So making sure that they try and find ground elsewhere is very important at the moment. Yeah, and I think they need to lean into the strengths of their division, right? So, like, the Italians are phenomenal here in the woods, so they really got us. The Italians need to stick to the woods and dominate, because 20th Panzer can't fight in the woods at all. And Festung really is not good at CQC either, so they, they should really be able to win any green fight inside of trees. We got JU87 coming in on the bottom side. No AA down here just yet. The 85 actually struggling to aim from the middle. Um, so, decent bombing strike going to be continuing to force those infantry back and kind of hold this position. Uh, currently just the T-34 and the Panzer IV really uh, the ones holding the line there uh, from all of this infantry they have in position. But what they could really use there is some smoke so they can get these 15-man uh, submachine gun squads nice and close. Yeah, and if you have an SU-122 way back here actually holding off some of these infantry in the center doing a really nice job. These Jagdkamp uh, just moving across the open here and this isn't Orno, so things do die when they get shot in the open <laughs> yeah come <laughs> moving across yeah they're starting to make some ground though the 85 mil uh, was suppressed by the Grilla and the IG-18 SOS troop now charging in uh, with those fast vehicles the Ozas Thropen following up and Flak 43 actually on the backside to back up the 88 here as well uh, looks like off map is going to be moving up from Farad Rommel. Uh, the 164 mil does get three shots. He's actually placing it on the top side once again in that concentration of units. Trying to hold back that push for the time being. Actually only holding the line with like a Luftwaffe Jaeger at the moment. Yeah. That's a very dangerous spot. Yeah, that's a defensive off map there just to keep this because uh, uh, Grabber's doing a great job of, of get getting veterancy on these infantry. And when these Italian infantry are at three stars, they, they shred. They absolutely rip through everything. A nice cheeky bomb strike. BF-109 trying to get rid of this 45 so it doesn't have the threat of the side shot onto the boat of Stalin. Uh, Grilla or IG should be fire positioning that ideally. But off map now coming down. Going to be pinning down all of these forces and potentially chipping some of these squads but not actually doing too much damage. Again, this off map has been well placed but it hasn't actually done any significant damage to the push so far but they have found the extra flag in the middle it's now 13 11 in favor of Farad Ooh. and Humian. Common Dosi here tip picking up a martyr three kill with its Piot. Uh, go Piot I guess doing its thing. Oh yeah. Dos Troop now in a nice position. Jagdkampf as a serpent managing to catch up in the center here and I think it's really really up to uh, Yamin and Gonzo to kind of stem this push that's coming through here as soon as possible and try and make a play on this island with the troops that they have there. On the bottom side, Farad's actually brought in a yeah. Jagdpanther. Uh, that His only one. 
Yeah, and it can't currently see the SU-152, otherwise it would be firing at it. Yeah, it will, though. Uh, well, unless these uh, Luftwaffe Jaegers go too far forward, the SU-152 will spot them first. Might kill this 88 off, actually. That would be pretty huge. There it goes. Oh, oh get the tracks, tracks broken. broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, it wasn't transmission uh, broken. <laughs> the track's broken, I think, only technically on one turn. side, yeah. Yeah, you can still turn, which is weird, but yeah, you can still turn. The SU-152 has a higher crit rate, right? Yes, it does, yeah. Yeah, because it always seems, every time it shoots at stuff, it just seems to get a crit for no matter what's going on. It's always like, oh, okay. This front crit. line is all over the place right now. The On top of the hill in the center, he's, they've managed to grab the the flag there, the red side. Blue side yep. pushed across the open further down, but unfortunately red side can't peek that because of all of the long range units there. On the bottom side, <laughs> these Luftwaffe Jaeger managing to break through completely, surrounding the close range infantry of Gonzo here in cover. Panzer IV F1 having a whale of a time there, trying to stop the 88 from being killed off from cover. Yeah, the 88 couldn't decide what to shoot at, so it just kept changing targets. I hate when that happens. It's so weird. So yeah, just weird salient there. And now the push here in the set on the center island, though, getting broken down. These infantry getting caught in a little bubble. And these RDD are going to be able to easily clean up these Urzats troop, and Stolz troop don't have enough, and the Agcomf are not a CQC squad. So those will be dead soon, and that flag might flip back any moment. Yeah, the RDD actually get caught, though, by the last Molotov of the Stolz troop, so... Hasn't Ooh. quite taken them out just yet, and they're going to maintain position there, which is okay, because as long as they kind of sit and cover the road, they might be able to do a decent chunk of damage. But the bottom side really being reinforced heavily here uh, by the blue team, Himanyun and Farad, pushing in with Stostrope, Pack 40, IG-18, Marder 3, kind of sensing a massive gap here in the front line that they want to try and take advantage of. Yeah, the tracks broken on that Yag Panther actually really hurt because that could push way further forward and kind of cut both reinforcement roads off. But because of that, they're kind of stuck here in this position for the time being. Yeah, and it's probably unlikely that they have like phase A supply, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be sat there for a little while. It's also kind of still in a risky position because a supply truck can't really get close to that without being shot by light arms fire. So. He's ba they basically got to deal with all this infantry in the in the heavy cover, even though it's not necessarily causing their other units too much problem. The Erd Kemplefet might be able to help out in that regard, but the 88 actually might go down here to the double DP of this Paddy Rocks. They're getting hit hard. Yeah, I mean, Geralt's using... Is that is Geralt... Is that Gonzo? Yes, that is. Yeah, except Gonzo using his infantry actually really aggressively. He could just hide in the woods, but he has decided not to. He keeps popping out to try to probably get that 88 i would think because that's giving the air cover up north an airstrike from a bf 109 and ju87 trying to soften up some of these support weapons like the assault gun and stuff but all the way up north red has pushed all the way through capturing another flag here and putting blue on the back foot yeah still 12 to 12 across the board considering how much things are going backwards and forwards but the push of the red team on top of this hill as you mentioned is being broken down these airstrikes helping massively with that double panzer 3 t34 panzer 3 Recon now coming up, supported by these Grenz and Jagdkampf, will be more than enough to get through the Sherman and the remaining infantry there, I imagine. T-34 versus T-34 <laughs> happening on the <laughs> left side of the mid. Oh, the Resvetka gets the first shot off and uh, wins the day there. Yeah, and we're, it is important to note we're now in B phase, which means two players have Maverick income going, Farad lost his high Vanguard income, and... Uh, Poor Gonzo slowly catching up with his beautiful balance income. <laughs> yeah, but we see the Opal Blitz uh, now being brought in. It has rich phase B, so there's that supply coming in to try and fix up the Jagdpanth, and it's going to want to get there as soon as possible because uh, the IS-2-1943 is creeping. J-87 looking to take them yeah. out. Yeah, and I don't see any AA down here, so that could be an, a freebie kill here for this J-87. That'd be huge. It'd be absolutely massive. You can see that uh, Gonzo has noticed he's going to unload his 85 mil immediately and hope for the best. <laughs> will it be enough? It won't be it enough to stop it, but it will stop it from getting the kill, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's too spread. Ooh, that was, that was, <laughs> ooh, that was close. <laughs> Very close indeed. Which is Stalin getting hit by what looks like some artillery? 
Yes, it is under assault from artillery here. Uh, there are two Obice 75 mils back here, Italian light artillery pieces, taking shots. Yeah, those artillery pieces are incredibly good. They have a really solid rate of fire and uh, aim time. Oh, but the 57 finding the side shots here towards the boy Stalin. Bounces the side shot. That's Oof. unfortunate. And the AT gun getting forced to move. Flames underneath. Forced off by the HE rounds there. And uh, will be moved out of line of sight <laughs> once again. Young Panther has got its tracks fixed. So it is available to help push on this bottom side. And now that IS-2-1943 is damaged, that Young oh, yeah. Panther is a one-shot kill. Yeah, it's now like a who actually gets the one pen first. It should be the Ag Panther. Uh, this is the high. This is the high armor IS. No, it's the low armor IS2. Excuse me. So it should be penned pretty easily by the Ag Panther. Yeah, the Ag Panther, such a glorious beast, and when it has three veterancy, should have more than enough accuracy to win the engagement versus the IS2. Uh, Farad's trying to sort of rush up the road here to get the shot on target. Kills the SU-152 with the help of the Stug. So that was nice. Two shots penned immediately. Stug three in a bit of a dodgy spot, but I think he might be purposefully trying to bait the shot out of the IS-2. Yeah, that's definitely very possible. It happened to all miss anyway. Now the IS-2 is on return fire. Another SU-152 in range of the Ag Panther and Stug combo. Let's see if they can pull it off again. One hit already. Another engine, another crit from that SU-152 gets an engine stall. Yeah, the engine stall's not great because I'm pretty sure that means it can't turn at all, but it is still able to get its gun on target of the SG-122 and finds the kill. The rate of fire plus the accuracy there really paying off. <laughs> Stug 3 taking a shot from an IS-2 going down after receiving a crit of its own. As that's mm. open, coming in to back up the mid and it looks like the island there. Yag Panther gets the shot off, kills the IS-2, but another IS-2 already in. Up north, uh, I mean, the infantry are grinding, but the Italians are coming out strong and holding that. There's a huge blob of T-34 oh. Panzer threes here. This is absolutely <laughs> slaughter from the Yag Panther. I took out the SU-152 <laughs> that was supporting the second IS-2 as well. Another IS-2 purchased here from Gonzo, just constantly bringing these in. It looks like Yamin's trying to get the Bowfighter on target. Um, apologies if the names are confusing, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> these are two exceptional players, Yamin and Gonzo. Uh, they decided to change their names from the tournament, so. <laughs> I yell at people all the time for this. <laughs> well, plenty of AA on the bottom side stops that bow fighter from getting close. Not the fastest aircraft in the world, but here we go. Some more off map coming in. This time, the 220 mil off map of Humayun's 20th Panzer, looking to soften up the enemy forces before the charge in with the Ersatz troop and looking to find another flag now on the island. And this map is actually very, very difficult to find a double tick on. And you can see that throughout the game, because although there's a significant amount of kills on both sides... Oh, both fighter. Oh! I gets it. Ooh. Nice. The uh, first, like, few rockets there were, like, perfect accuracy. That was nuts. Yeah. And the Ag Panther was, of course, quite damaged from the several SU-152 hits and stuff, so it's not like it was pristine, right? And up north now we have another airstrike coming, JU-87, BF-109, and another JU-87 cluster bomber variants coming in for the Sherman. Looks like the Sherman's causing a lot of issues, apparently. It's not going to yeah. get through. I think these just bringing in enough JU-87s to sort of overwhelm it, right? And uh, that JU-87, if it manages to get the dive, should get the bombs off. But is, is it going to be accurate enough? I don't think it is. No, it doesn't get the bombs off, even. <laughs> At the last minute, yeah. And shot down. Now, in the town, the Urzats did push all the way through. It left all these infantry around, but now massive push here coming from it as we're nearing sea phase and all the maverick players will be losing their mighty income yeah this is really going to open up the red team for uh, a comeback here with the balanced deployment type on gonzo's oh, sorry yamin's forces uh we'll see the me 410 coming out again though this is a significant push on the island honestly if this island push works out you can really cut off this bridge that allows you to reinforce it so uh, that could be a permanent flag for the rest of the game almost. Now on this top side, however, 
really nice push through from Yemen. Has managed to secure 1311 by capturing that flag. Now Yankamp from Vestin is going to dig. Going to have to try and clean that up. Things on the bottom side actually going pretty bad now that the Yag uh, the Yagpanth has gone down as well. Yeah, the issue is, uh, you know, it. I mean, the Flak 105 has not a chance of killing this IS. Oh, it gets a pen. It gets a hit. Did that not? Oh, because it's a heavy. Because it's a heavy tank. I forgot. Yeah, the the Flak 105 does 10 damage, and the IS2 has 12 health. That's why it didn't die in one shot like most tanks do. Yeah, the 105. Uh, yeah, very unique in that regard. It's one shot those medium tanks. It's absolutely crazy when you have a high value oh, yeah. just mows down Germans or something. It's crazy to watch. Uh, but in the mid, uh, Panzer threes trying to push through. One of them actually gets killed off by the Piat of the leader there. Uh, not enough infantry support really here. More, more Panzer fours coming in even. Uh, without that infantry to back them up. More Vestensgrens instead coming in onto the island, which is really starting to look like it's going to be locked down now with the second off-map strike coming in towards that bridge. And if those infantry can get through that heavy cover, they can really deal with that nicely. On the bottom side, Gonzo's infantry is still holding the line. This has been absolute oh, yeah. heroes here. Well, now the 105 is getting broken down because the SU-152 can just fire right in front of the 105 over and over again. So that's that's the issue with this being your only defense at this point is because there's just so many SU-152s in 43rd Reserve. It's hard to kill them all. Yeah, brilliant 2,000 meter range HE unit. And in this case being used nice and effectively on this bottom side. They're going to need some tanks to really back that up. But honestly, it looks like Farid and Huma Yuna really going all in on this island push. And also in the center push. They've actually kind of relinquished the forests on the top side. And yeah, this game is still anyone's to take. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they need to recapture this flag of north, which they just did, bring it back to a 12-12. Now they gotta, they need to find another flag, because the south is kind of falling apart here, and I don't think they really have any more responses to these IS-2s that are effective anymore. Yeah, the SU-152s finished off that 105. Double JU-87 coming in for the cluster strike onto the Sherman 1. The 20 mil hasn't been backed up with more AA, so it's likely that one of those will get through. Uh, meanwhile, on the bottom side, J88 was looking for the bomber strike onto the IS-2, but going to get forced off by the 85. You see a pack 43 in now. Uh, you know, and again, the issue is each one of these can 100% kill these tanks, but the SU-152s, when played well, which they will be, uh, they just kind of shut all that kind of stuff down completely. Yeah, I think uh, he put it on efficient shots to so make sure that it didn't fire unnecessarily, but it ended up using its HE on the Motorovitka, so it has now revealed itself and will likely be taken care of by the SU-152s. Ideally, what you want to do is have it high enough federancy so you can get a, a couple of shots off before it gets revealed. Uh, JU-87 on the off side there almost got its uh, cluster strike off. I think it was because the AA was focusing the JU-88. Yeah, very close, but it's not enough. And there's still a second IS-2. It's now kind of rolling up north, but there, and then here comes another one, too. Um, yeah, I just don't, I don't think, like, 20th is obviously kind of out of big AT stuff at this point, other than the Pack 43 Yeah, I just, I'm not sure what they do against those, but it is a 13-11 again for them. They got a long way to go, though, on a 13-11. Yeah, the biggest problem is income right now. The Vanguard Maverick kind of both on their lowest income whilst you know Yamin's still sitting there with the balanced income for the rest of the game and that's gonna be a huge thing that uh, Farad and Humayun have to deal with and it really looks like you know they've got full control over this top side they've just kind of kind of break down this island push and then they'll have the resources I imagine to try and get back on there yeah, and now the Italian infantry are starting to show up on this island. That's when things will definitely start going really poorly here for the blue side because their infantry just can't hold up against the Italians in any way. Well, these ju 87s always getting so close, but never <laughs> quite hitting the mark. And the 85 might just shoot that down, or at least maybe a Dushka well, because that's incredibly low health. Spitfire, as you mentioned, does not have guns, so can't chase down the... JU87 there, but more infantry coming in onto the island. They're really committing uh, to this flag. 
but the top side is just so open right now, particularly Eddie. Yeah. Gonna be moving through to take ground. Although, as soon as they unload, it won't be pushing the front line anymore. Yeah, and also we just saw Boitus Shalin up against an IS-2-1943. The IS-2-1943 obviously with the advantage due to the higher veterancy and the higher armor on that. So, once that gets broken down and Ferret surrendering here, which I assume means Homeyun will be after him. There we there go. There you have it. 22 minutes, 27 seconds. Farad and Humeyun do not see a way to win with their income. And if we jump to kills and losses, well, Yamin trading very, very nicely with his Italians. 2,095 kills to 1,310 losses. Very nice indeed. Yeah, I mean, they out-traded him. They played aggressive. That's what the Foxes do. And, you know, a lot of times they'll trade troops. They'll trade they'll they'll trade troops for for territory and if you get enough territory that's okay but if you don't then that comes to bite you in the butt eventually and that's kind of what we saw here yeah i think the other issue as i was mentioning throughout the game was oaba is a very difficult map to double tick on and so with their incomes it was like they were under a lot of pressure to make it work and the yak panther was starting to make it work on the bottom side but as soon as that went down all of those support weapons were so vulnerable to the 43rd su 152s uh yeah it was it was difficult for them to deal with that's for sure yeah maybe maybe an odd choice of incomes from them you know and i know that's it's kind of like they're it's their thing. <laughs> you know, that's their thing to play really aggressively, and I, I do respect that, but this might not have been the map for it. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you'd like to add? No, great match from both all players. Excited to see the next one. Indeed. We've, of course, got uh, best of three here, so uh, Yamin and Gonzo looking to take the second game in order to win. Otherwise, Barrett and Humiyun maybe bring back uh, reverse sweep. That would be cool. But that's it for oh, now. Yeah. We Oof. want three games, right? So we want them to win. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget, hit that like button and subscribe to oh, both channels. We really it appreciate in. it. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.